Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing my weeks 18 and 19 pregnancy updates. Um, as of today, I am 20 weeks and one day, which feels like a really big deal to be halfway through already. Um, it really, I mean, I feel like everybody says this, but I mean, it's true. It really has flown by really, really quickly. Um, so I will go ahead and start out with my 18 and 19 weeks, like symptoms, I guess, if that's what you want to call them. Um, and then I need opinions. It's not very often that I ask for opinions, but I need them. So let's jump right into it. So <clears throat> the biggest thing has been the kind of like re-emergence of my insomnia over the last two weeks. My sleeping has not been great. I have been struggling to turn my mind off at night. It just like races. I am classically <laughs> known for getting like a song stuck in my head and then just like a certain like line of that song uh, looping in my head while I'm sleeping, while I'm awake for like 24 hours and it's kind of awful. But um, so that's been happening kind of a lot. Basically what happens is I'm usually asleep by about, oh, I want to say like 10 at night, usually between like nine and 10 sometime in there. And I wake up usually to go to the bathroom between midnight and one and then I'm awake until about five. So it's not super cool. Um, it makes me feel like then I want to sleep all day, but then I don't want to sleep all day because then I won't sleep the following night. So knock on wood, the last two nights have actually been pretty good. I actually slept through the night <laughs> in my own bed. So <sighs> here's hoping that continues. Uh, to accompany the insomnia, I also have an eye twitch. My right eye has been twitching pretty much nonstop for the last it's, uh, probably about two weeks or so. So that makes me feel like I'm going a little bit crazy. Uh, like Chris will be talking to me and I'm just like <laughs> squinting my eyes trying to get it to stop twitching because it's so distracting. So if you see me blinking a lot or doing like... <laughs> this I'm not having a stroke it's just my eye twitch so that's cool and like you know I've been trying usually for me eye twitches are a sign of like stress or anxiety and I honestly don't feel overly stressed out right now or anxious I've really been working hard on like my hypnobirthing relaxation breathing I do it every single night before I go to bed. I do uh, like guided meditation, which has been really nice. I don't know. So then I thought maybe like I'm deficient in some sort of like mineral, magnesium <laughs> being one of them. So I started taking a magnesium supplement, but I've only taken it twice. So I don't really think I've given it a fair shot to work. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm hoping that the magnesium will help. Fingers crossed. I have also been having terrible left knee pain, which has absolutely nothing to do with pregnancy. It has everything to do with my crappy, crappy knees. Um, when I was 18, I dislocated my right knee. So that's historically been my bad knee. Um, or maybe like the knee that I favor the most. But my left knee for like the last, I'd say week and a half is just like, it hurts all the time. Um, there's really nothing that I do t that makes it feel better. Like stretching doesn't help. Walking doesn't help. I haven't gone for a walk in like a week and a half. I feel like a fat lard. <sighs> but this knee, it's like super crunchy. Meaning like when I bend it, there's a real good crunch going on, which it's been like that, honestly, for a long time, but it's never really been painful. Uh, so that's cool. Lord knows I'm not going to go to the doctor about it or probably mention it, even though I probably should. But I mean, like, really, what are they going to do? 
maybe give me the physical therapy referral that they were supposed to three weeks ago. What do I know? So we'll see what happens there. I, you know, I'm the kind of person that when I have an ache or pain, I, I just prefer to barrel through it and deal with it, which is not really <laughs> the way that I should be, but it kind of feels like babying it is not helping either. So I probably just need to like get back to it and go about my life and see what happens. And the last thing in terms of symptoms, I've been really tired. Probably starting like maybe this time, maybe a week ago. So close to when I turned over to 20 weeks. No, when I turned to 19 weeks. Um, so, so, so tired. Like more tired than I was during the first trimester. <laughs> like exhausted. Like my arms and my legs feel like wet noodles. So tired. So back to napping. I get a good nap in every day. Um, and I don't know if that's just like, I don't know if this will make sense, but like when babies go through growth spurts, they sleep a lot. So I don't know if like the baby is going through a big growth spurt and is requiring a lot of energy to grow. So in turn, I'm more tired. That's what I'm going to go with. But I don't know if that's actually the case. I do feel like I'm feeling baby move around more consistently or maybe I'm more sure than that's what I'm feeling I still don't really it doesn't I'm not noticing any kind of like schedule that it moves around on but I can definitely feel it moving um you know my stomach continues to get bigger I'll show you a little picture whatever video at the very very end but I, overall, I will say I continue to feel good. Okay, on to the recommendations, folks. I need baby item essential recommendations. So I'm going to go over a list of specific things that I am looking for, like, opinions on. But I kind of will take any recommendations in general. I've got my my list here so I'm going to read off of it the first thing on my list is an in-bed co-sleeper that I can put the baby in that I can also side light breastfeed in without having to like move the baby around a lot if that makes sense so basically just like the baby is laying in it I pull it up next to me so that I can lay on my side to breastfeed we are foregoing a baby nursery, which I know <laughs> sounds kind of crazy. Um, and I honestly can't remember if I mentioned this in another video, but <clears throat> I, I honestly don't care about like all of the decorating and the nursery. I just don't care about that stuff. Like I'm a very practical person and realistically, this kid ain't going to sleep in its own room for like probably at least a year. Um, so I'm not gonna decorate this room that it's not even really gonna be in. Also, you know, we are currently in a two bedroom apartment and our second room is our guest bedroom and we really don't want to give that up for like when visitors like family and friends come stay with us. So Sorry, baby, you're low man on the totem pole. You don't get a room. So it's going to be uh, in our bedroom with us, obviously. I'm looking for an in-bed co-sleeper. Something the baby can sleep in the bed with us, but is in its own little space that I can side light nurse in. And I have, I've been scouring the interwebs, and I think I have a couple of things that might work. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, next thing I need opinions on, diaper bags. Um, I prefer not a backpack. I like something probably with a messenger strap and nothing too pricey. Like I am not a fancy person by any stretch of the imagination. 
I'm sure that will come as a big surprise. <laughs> so nothing too expensive. Neutral, obviously, gender neutral, since we are not finding out the sex of baby, who, by the way, I feel as though is a girl. I really, my gut is telling me that it is a stubborn little hatchet girl because every time I like try to find the heartbeat, it takes me a good solid five minutes because I can hear the baby. Like I'll put the probe on my stomach and I can hear the baby moving around, like intentionally moving away from the probe. The other day it took me like over five minutes to find it. And like when I finally did find it, it was only for about five seconds. Like the kid was all over the place. So if uh, experience tells me anything, it's a girl. <laughs> So, uh, whatever. Okay, the next thing. Do people still, like, use diaper genies? I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I see them in the stores. And I think they're good for, like, the stinky poop diapers. But I don't know if this is, like, a must-have nowadays. Like, what do you do for diaper pails? We, I thought about doing cloth diapering for a hot minute, but then decided that I don't want to do that. <laughs> so... We will be using regular diapers, disposable. So let me know your opinions on a diaper genie or if there's other some kind of like contraption that people use nowadays to store diapers in. Let me know. Um, bucket versus convertible car seat. So I plan on doing a lot of baby wearing and I just don't know how practical it is or if I need a bucket seat or if I can start out with a convertible car seat <sighs> right from the beginning. I mean, I know that I can. Convertible car seats generally start at four or five pounds. So I'm assuming the baby will be able to fit in that when it's born. Um, and I kind of, you know, being practical, I kind of hate the idea of buying two different car seats. It would be nice to just start with one and that's the car seat that we use for the next however many years. But it also seems, at least like when the baby is little, little, that having a bucket car seat that like detaches and you can carry out of the car would be kind of convenient as well. Maybe I can just actually get a bucket <laughs> and put the baby in that. See, you see, uh, I'm kidding. I wouldn't actually put the baby in a bucket. I mean, I would for like a joke, maybe for a picture, but not for real life. Okay, next baby carriers. I need opinions on the soft stretchy kind and also like the more structured kind. So brands that you love, styles that you love, why you love them. I'll take all of the opinions. I kind of am leaning more towards Tula's, uh, to the Tula brand, um, mainly because they are good for people that are overweight like I am. So something that is going to work for a fuller figured person. Um, and that's all on my list. So anything else you guys want to send my way like oh you really need this uh that would be great i'm pretty set on uh oh oh okay so i need all of my ibc lc peeps i know lots of ibc lcs out there anyone that watches this i need to know what the opinion is in the lactation consultant community on haka milk catchers they're the little silicone milk catchers that like suction to your breast um and they're not a pump per se but they collect or catch milk that might be spilled say your breastfeeding baby on one side a lot of times you will have a letdown on the other side and generally that just gets wasted um so it's something that you can put on the other breast that will collect and catch the milk um while you're breastfeeding or if you're pumping or whatever. So I want to know what opinions are in the lactation community on these milk catchers. For some reason, I feel like they would put you at an increased risk for thrush. Um, and I don't know why. I don't have any like 
evidence to back that up, but I kind of feel like they could be like a thrush magnet. So let me know what everyone thinks. I, I've seen lots of like reviews on them and people just rave about them. Like they save so much milk with them, but I've also seen, I feel like a lot of people with thrush. So let me know about that. Um, think that's it. Uh, the next two weeks, my parents are coming in town tomorrow and we'll be here for a whole week. Have I got plans for them? No, <laughs> I don't. Uh, but the weather is supposed to warm up, which I know they will appreciate. They just went through the polar vortex in the Midwest where the temperatures were in the like, the wind chills at least were in the negative 50s. So that's cool. Um, so they'll be down here for a week, which will be lots of fun. I need to clean. You see that eye? <laughs> I need to clean. Uh, I don't want to clean, but whatever. So that's my plan for the next week or so. I will keep you guys updated. Um, I've been trying to keep my Instagram sort of updated. Really, I'm just posting weekly belly shots there. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, maybe follow my Instagram account. There's a, a link for it in my uh, channel about section. So thanks for watching. I will end this with a belly shot. All right. Keep it real, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.